GPS is going through the second major revolution right now, but this time you can be a part of the upside. In this video, I'm going to tell you how GPS enabled technologies like Uber, Google Maps, even the iPhone, and how this first generation of GPS unlocked billions of dollars of infrastructure and tools and products, and how right now we're going through a second generation of GPS that's going to unlock even more products of the future but this time you get to be a part of the upside and participate in this new journey. So stay tuned with me in this video, learn a few things about GPS and learn how you can be a part of this change right now. I'm gonna jump right into it. It's basically GPS, it's like a brand name. It's the American Satellite Constellation, but we get location here on Earth through a series of a constellation of satellites in the sky. Essentially, we have satellites all orbiting the Earth and we're able to locate ourselves by this thing called trilateration, basically triangulating ourselves by finding you know, three or more satellites and it's gonna pin us onto the Earth's surface. So that's essentially what's going on, right? We got a bunch of satellites in the sky, I know where they are, and then from that information, I'm able to find myself on the Earth. Really high level, guys. Uh, not trying to get too deep. That's basically in principle what's going on. Now, we had uh, in 1995, remember the GPS uh, full constellation satellite, the, America, uh, the Americans was uh, available, called GPS. Then we had the Russians and they had GLONASS and then the European Union, Galileo. And now the Chinese have their latest generation, Baidu 3, that was available in 2020. And there's local constellations like uh, the ones offered by Japan. So we have a lot of satellites and the more satellites in the sky, the easier it is to resolve where we are on the earth. So, a big thing happened in May of 2000 though. Because this technology was essentially a military technology, a dual use technology, military and civilian, we didn't actually give away the most accurate information in the satellites. So we purposefully scrambled some of the information in this thing called selective availability. And that would make your ability to resolve your location on earth to about a hundred meters. But in May 2000, we turned all that off and we let that data fly through the air and now you're able to go down to about three to five meters. And so going from hundreds of meters to three to five, this happened at a flip of a switch in May of 2000. What did that do? Well, did a lot. We had a lot of innovation that happened because of that one switch flip. Basically, precision agriculture is now a thing where we have auto steer or precision application of, of pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. So these tractors are steering themselves, applying uh, fertilizers or herbicides and pesticides and fungicides and all that's possible because of that selective um, selective availability was turned off and then then we have google maps guys and we use this one all the time apple maps came out in 2012 but google maps came out in 20, 2004 and then google earth in 2005 the iphone android doordash fitbit uber i mean you guys get the picture all these technologies are based off of the back of this selective availability being turned off and getting accurate information down to three to five meters. So that's what I'm calling this first generation. You got the first generation shift, this selective availability is turned off and now we have three to five meter accuracy and then boom, huge industries are born. We have lots of technologies that you use every day, all the time are being leveraged off of that one switch. Now let's come to what I'm calling the second generation. That's April of 2022 and that's this GeoNet network. And so GeoNet is doing something slightly different to take us from meters to centimeters. See what I'm saying? So we went from hundreds of meters to a handful of meters. Now we're going from a handful to centimeters. You know, again, a huge improvement of accuracy. And so this one's a little bit different though. So in the first one, we just had satellites in the sky and we can just record this information and find ourselves on the earth. The second generation, it's using something called RTK. Now. Let me explain that a little bit differently. So we have a bunch of satellites in the sky. What if we mirrored that and had a bunch of stations on the ground? And so that's kind of where we're, what we're thinking here. And why would we do that? Well, whenever, I mean, if, if you play video games, you're familiar with latency, right? So like if you're playing Call of Duty and you have high latency, you're like constantly like lagging from everyone else in the game, right? So a very similar things happening from these satellite signals to get down to you on Earth. We basically have distortions in the signal, which just fundamentally you can't resolve the information good enough to find your location. But if I have two GPSs, they can actually cancel out a lot of that common mode noise and take that accuracy down from that couple meters to the centimeters. 
So that's the whole concept here. We wanna have a second GPS receiver networked and communicating with our GPS receiver. And by having that network connection and being able to triangulate ourselves from the Earth's surface, as well as the multiple satellites in the sky, we can resolve our location down to centimeters. And that's essentially what's going on with RTK. Obviously the math and everything, it's much more complicated. I'm making it very overly simplified here, but that's basically what's going on. And that's what GeoNet is. So we can actually hop over here onto the Rock Cloud, and because we have a plugin, uh, so everything is available in Rock Cloud that shows the GeoNet network. And all of these are people's base stations. That's one of these guys set up at someone's house and they're recording their location and submitting that to the network. So each dot here, so we can zoom in, you know, there's two right there, each one of these. And how good is this? So basically, as long as you're within about 10 kilometers of one of these stations, you can get that highest accuracy of information. So I can zoom in here and let's just choose random one here. I can click on this and we can see all the information about this station. That's one of these stations. 100% um, uptime shows you all the satellites it's measuring. And a couple of the cool things for like the people using this is like you can download the raw data and use that raw data. Uh, and so people are using this today. So that's, that's basically what's going on. So GeoNet is a collection of stations on the Earth's surface that is now offering this meter to centimeter. All right, so that's that's GeoNet, and Rock Robotic is participating with GeoNet by selling stations that you can contribute, and we also manage the real-time network, so you can have access to the real-time data, so people are using it and paying money to use this. Now, why would we do this? I think I explained it a little bit a second ago, but let me just cover again. Uh, so the future technologies that we believe today, you know, obviously when they went from you know hundreds of meters to meters, they didn't know the iPhone was gonna come out or Uber. That was we're like, no one even thought of that yet. So who knows really? But right now we can say pretty safely, autonomous vehicles need this data. Uh, drones need this data. You know, we have land surveying, construction, use this types of data today. Precision agriculture, as well as, you know, what I'm calling this really interesting thing, location validation. Um, Cause with deep fakes and all this, you know, new types of data, wouldn't it be cool to have a network that you can validate the location where a photo was taken? I think that'd be really cool. Uh, so that way we can kind of like prevent some of the deep fake stuff. I'm gonna show you some magic. But anyways, this is all the stuff that's being, you know, used today and thought of today other than location validation. But the future, who knows what's gonna come out from having this type of access to the democratized, you know, very accurate data. Let me jump into why I believe in this guys. So. Hang, in, hang with me here because let me tell you how you can actually participate in this and this is why I believe in it. So GeoNet is a crypto network, right? So you can buy one of these base stations and participate in this network. You can contribute data to the network and you get rewarded in tokens. They're called Geo tokens. And so basically you're earning tokens. Essentially, if you're familiar with crypto networks, this is a miner, this is mining. Uh, those tokens and the way it mines it is proof of location, basically proof of how good the data is you're getting the network. You know, we know what perfect data looks like. If you're contributing that data to the network and you're a node that's contributing data, we're gonna reward, reward you with tokens for having this installed at your house. Now let's look in those tokens value a little bit. I actually have it pulled up over here and we can see, you know, let's look over a year's time, you know, 23 cents up to 27 cents is doing pretty good. It's going up. So like, you know, I had a guy that just said he bought one of these 700 bucks. He made five grand over this past 12 months. But, you know, I'm pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, but take the crypto out of it. Let's just remove all of that talk. The network still has value with none of that involved. And that's to me, what's the most important thing. This high accuracy data has value, intrinsic value with or without any of the crypto talk, right? So because of that is why I believe in, I believe in it, even if all crypto goes to hell, you know, in the, the, the wreckage and the, when the dust settles, this network will still be there because it still has intrinsic value. I'm not leaving. And that to me is what makes me feel good about this. Um, Cause I'm not like a huge speculator or a speculative kind of guy. I don't do those things. Uh, but this has a very real world value and I see that value and I personally use it and I need to use it. So I want more of you guys to buy base stations and set them up so I can go anywhere in the world and get access to this data. Cause I need it. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's why I feel very good about this because it has really good real world value. Other than that, the data that I'm getting from these stations is so good. So the actual GNSS receiver inside of this thing is phenomenal, like phenomenal, phenomenal. It's like a $30,000 receiver in this thing. I mean, what you can make products out of there. You can benchmark these things and it's it's crazy the, the quality of uh, data you're getting from this. So that's why I feel very bullish of it. Now, so it's that intrinsic value. That's that's kind of the fundamental part of it. So you can get one, you can install it, you can start earning uh, tokens, or you can get one, install it, and start using, leveraging the RTK network as well as all the Rhinox data. Kind of have two options. Or you can just buy, so if you just wanna purchase the RTK access, you can buy that, it's 41 bucks, 42 bucks a month. Um, so that's all available today. And people are using it today. I'm very excited about it. I'm very curious what the future has to uh, to hold this one because the amount of technology that happened from the uh, selective availability being turned off is quite insane. And uh, the amount of technology that could be available for robotics, uh, autonomous vehicles, you know, all of this having precise location information, who knows what the future has to hold. I just think it sounds really cool and we know there's value in it today but who knows what the value is of tomorrow. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer or, or jump in, make another video real quick. But uh, with that being said, I'll see you on the next one here on Indiana Drones.